welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. Today, as you can tell from the title, we're gonna be talking about contract research organizations or commonly known as CROs. I actually tried to make this video like four different times. I tried during the holiday break, before that, and then earlier in 2022, literally like New Year's Eve day. But for some reason, like I would be tripping up on my words. I just couldn't film the content. And I've had my own weird interactions with CROs. So I kind of feel like it was a mental block in, in me trying to create this video. Because sometimes negative experiences can make us only say bad things about an experience when it's not all negative. But today I felt really inspired. I just got home and thought that, you know what? let's make this video because a lot of you have been asking me about CROs and if you should work there or work for the sponsor ie pharmaceutical companies so that is what we're going to talk about in today's video before I get started you already know what I'm going to say make sure you order my book the prepared graduate you can find it on Amazon Target Barnes & Noble Booktopia wherever all the links you need to order the book are down in the description box it's also really hot and as you can see I'm like sitting directly in the Sun so I don't need this cold outside not cold in here and Take these off. I'm gonna move so that I'm not like in the sun. Okay, this is good. Okay, so let's get started. What does CRO stand for? CRO stands for Contract Research Organization. And essentially what a contract research organization is, is where a pharmaceutical company, will use examples, because you know I love to use examples. Let's say a pharmaceutical company is researching a drug for sickle cell. They're a really small organization. They don't really have the bandwidth to conduct the clinical trial themselves. They need manpower. They need someone to help them identify different clinical sites that could help fulfill expectations or requirements for that trial. They need someone who's gonna monitor the trial. They need a CRA that's gonna go to different sites. They need someone who's gonna manage the data management plan. They need someone who's gonna train these sites on the protocol. They just need someone to help them facilitate this exact clinical trial for this drug because they can't do it on their own. Also, some people who have like pharmaceutical companies overseas, they will use a contract research organization to be their United States agent who will be the holder of the IND. Of course, this company overseas is still responsible for the product, for the study, for everything, but the CRO is just going to help them manage it in the United States because they are in another country. So the pharmaceutical company reaches out to a contract research organization and they say, we need help with X, Y, and Z. That is any requirements or responsibilities that pertain to the management of a clinical trial. That's essentially what a CRO does. They just help you execute clinical trials. Simple as that. Within a CRO, they have multiple different roles, multiple different positions positions that might not be exactly what you'll see in a pharma company, but they have, you know, the regular people, data management, biostats, regulatory affairs, medical writers. They have CRAs, which a lot of pharmaceutical companies might not have their own CRAs. They'll just get them from um, a CRO. So the CRO, that's I mean, pretty much it. I thought I had way more to say in terms of what they are, but they really just help you execute your, your clinical trial. And smaller pharmaceutical companies like to use CROs because it's easier for them, especially if they don't have the manpower or the bandwidth. So a CRO will submit a bid to a pharmaceutical company. And normally pharma companies will get bids from multiple CROs and whichever CRO has the best synergy in terms of like, if that pharmaceutical company feels like there'll be a good re working relationship, they'll go with them. or it could be a price thing it could be expertise in a specific therapeutic area it all depends on the criteria the pharmaceutical company looks at in choosing their CRO the CRO will come in and they will help identify clinical sites and when I say identify clinical sites you know like USC hospital that's just one I can think of or UCLA hospital conducts a lot of clinical trials those physicians at the hospital may have expertise in hematology or they might go to Emory University because they have really great uh, researchers for sickle cell and they know that those sites will get a lot of patients in that therapeutic area. And, and CROs have access to all those sites and they have great relationships with sites. So it's, it's again, another pro for the, the pharma company that's really small trying to break into this space. A CRO has a lot of experience that that pharma company can leverage. And then when you have identified your sites, the CRO will ensure that the site is trained on the protocol. They'll ensure gathering all all the regulatory documentations like CVs and 1572s, financial disclosure forms, they will essentially manage every aspect of the clinical trial process. They can also do regulatory affairs consulting. A lot of CROs now are offering regulatory consulting. And then later in this video, I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of working for a CRO and at what stage in your career it's best to work for a CRO. But yeah, they'll offer regulatory consulting. So if a pharma company doesn't even have like a strong regulatory 
regulatory department, they can use a CRO to run that department for them. Um, they can also write media requests, briefing books, IBs, protocols. They can write the protocols for clinical studies for you. So CROs a lot of times do a lot of the legwork and it can be from start to finish. It can be from phase one all the way to end. CROs are not only for pharma, a lot of medical device companies also use CROs. And I think over the years, we've seen a lot of job opportunities for CRAs, which are clinical research associates. And they are the people who help move those clinical trials along on the CRO side. And what's great about being a CRA is that when you work for a CRO company, they will train you on everything. You can basically graduate from college, go straight to a CRO, and they will train you on everything you need to know, and then you're a CRA. And you can move up in the regulatory industry or in the pharma industry from a CRA. Someone I used to work for was a senior director of regulatory affairs, and they told me their first job was a, as a CRA. Another person who I used to work with was a senior director of clinical operations, and they also told me that the first job they ever had in industry after going out of college was working as a CRA. So a CRA is a great way to break into the industry. I'll make another video talking about what a CRA is and what they do in more detail. Now what I want to pivot to, now that you know what a CRO is, what they do, um, and how important their role is for small and big pharmaceutical companies. You might think small companies are the only people who use CROs, but that's not true. Big pharma companies also use CROs just because it's easier. And honestly, the best way I can describe a CRO from an employee perspective is that like a CRO is like a Ferris wheel and it never stops. The CRO is all in terms of like bandwidth and work, the Ferris wheel never stops. More projects get loaded on, but it never stops going. It's literally like a mill. It just goes in circles and circles more projects come on they come on they come on they come on and when the projects end they go off but they it's you know and sometimes the ferris wheel isn't balanced sometimes there are four or five projects in a seat on the ferris wheel if you get if you get what i'm saying so with a cro they're chugging out projects more than what you would see on the pharma side or the sponsor side. So as an employee of a CRO, you could have multiple projects at a time. It's not gonna be anywhere from three to four to five. You could literally have up to like 10 projects at a time. And it can be really overwhelming. I think the pros of working for a CRO, especially as an entry level person, is you get a sick amount of experience. Like you get exposure to everything, every therapeutic area, every aspect of the pharmaceutical industry. You get to learn how to write, read, breathe, pharma you get to learn how to write read breathe clinical research if you're on the medical monitoring of the clinical monitoring side or the execution of the trial itself i think that as someone who graduates from college or who just got their master's and wants to really break into the pharma industry in a different way and learn all the options that there are within the industry working for a cro is amazing for that and sometimes what you'll see at cro's is they have a high turnover rate because they're doing exactly what i'm telling you right now is they come out of college they gain so much experience for like six months or a year and then they leave and they're able to leverage that experience to get a higher paying job and a higher title somewhere else at a pharma company or at a med device company. Or you can even go to another CRO. A lot of people who I've worked with at CROs have transitioned from being in a CRO to like consulting in a specific area, whether it's medical writing consulting, regulatory affairs consulting, pharmacokinetics consulting. They just picked what they liked about the CRO, what they were doing, and then they kind of just pivot pivoted into the consulting realm. Because when you break out of the CRO, the work is gonna be less substantial. Like you do a lot of work at a CRO compared to any other kind of organization within pharma, med device, it doesn't matter. CROs are notorious for having an insane bandwidth. Like it's, you're working all day. But I think people who are trying to learn a lot about the industry, whether it's regulatory affairs, pharma, med device, it doesn't matter. Working in a CRO, you get to learn a lot. Like I consulted for CROs before and I can tell you that what I learned in one month at a CRO is probably 10x what I would learn one month anywhere else. So if you're in a place in your career where you're trying to learn a lot, you're trying to grow, you're trying to evolve, go look for a CRO and work there, honestly. Like PPD, Perexel, Cineos, Icon, IQVIA. There are so many different contract research organizations that you can work for that will give you the experience that you're looking for as an entry level person. It might be hard, but what is good about CRO 
heroes is they're willing to train you with the expectation that you hopefully stay for like, you know, two years. I see a lot of tenors at different CROs are on average about two years, but I do also see people who are there for less than six months. Now the cons of working for a CRO, if you're in the mid senior and up level and you're not really in a place in your life where you wanna be inundated with work and you're like eating, breathing, leaving, living, sleeping your job, a CRO might not be for you. You might wanna take more of a lax route and work for like a pharma company or work for a med device company and have ownership over your projects. Because at a CRO, you have no ownership. You do what your client tells you to do and you execute and that's it. You can give advice based on your experience, but for the most part, like whatever your client is telling you, you have to do what they're asking because they're paying at the end of the day. And then with the pharma side, you have more ownership over your projects because it's your company, you work for the company. Your opinion matters probably a lot more in the pharma or the sponsor side than it would in the CRO side. But again, if like, if you like that, if you just like, you know, learning, 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 constantly being stimulated, not that much downtime, I absolutely believe that a CRO would be a great place for you. But if you have other things going on in your life or you're trying to work for yourself or expand into different areas in addition to working your job, a CRO might not be the best place for you at that moment in your career. So it really just depends what you're looking for, what you want. I think a CRO offers great experience. And if I knew what a CRO was right out of graduating from college, I honestly could have ended up being a CRA and getting into regulatory affairs that way. I also could have just applied for an entry level, I don't know, anything. I, I, I really believe where I am is where it's supposed to be, but I think I probably would have looked for jobs at a CRO just because they offer so much experience, so much training. It's invaluable what you can learn working for a CRO. Me personally, would I like work for a CRO long-term? Probably not, because that's just not where I am in my career. I have my YouTube channel, I have my book out, I have other things going on where I feel like working for a CRO kind of takes away from you being able to focus on any aspect of yourself or your own life. I think you are up at 6, 7 in the morning and you are off at 6, 7 p.m. when you work for a CRO. And that's just what life is. And that's why a lot of people get burnt out. I know I've consulted, not consulted, I've had clients come to me who are CRAs and they'll say like, I'm really burnt out. I wanna to transition to quality assurance or regulatory affairs where the work-life balance is a little bit easier. And yeah, that's exactly why I, I don't love working for a CRO or I don't love CROs in general. It's cause it's too much work all of the time and it's not sustainable. But I think it's sustainable for people who are in a certain place in their career. This video was very long. And it's crazy because I struggled to make it in the first place. But I really do hope you found this helpful. Again, don't be discouraged to not work for a CRO. I think a lot of you who are subscribed to my channel are trying to break into regulatory or you just got into regulatory or you're looking to get into regulatory. Look at CROs, like go on their website, apply for regulatory jobs, apply for quality assurance jobs, apply for CRA jobs. If you're a fresh college grad, think that that is going to be a great way for you to break into the pharma industry. Well, until next time, Time, guys thank you so much for watching make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications and leave comments down below if you have any questions comments concerns or you want to see certain video content i love making videos when you guys give me the suggestion so until next time guys bye